So welcome to Antong. This city in Gyeonggi-do, it's renowned for its natural beauty. I mean, look at all of this greenery around us. But more than that, it's known as a well-being city. And I'm just happy to get out of Seoul. I feel better already. So this is Pokko Village, otherwise known as Tiger Village, and uh, I think you can see why. It's a quiet little farming town, but it's also full of these murals and sculptures, and it's a great place to just take a stroll and see some real creativity at work. So this is Ansong Farmland, and as you can tell, it's a real farm, and it's huge. They've got over 2,000 animals, and what's really cool about this place is that you can visit it all four seasons, and it's never the same. So today we're at Seoyo Farm, and behind me we have over 2,000 hangari, or Korean earthenware pots full of chang, which are currently fermenting. Not only that, this place is renowned for the number of Korean dramas that are shot here, and it's also at the forefront of the Korean slow food movement. Mmm, that's really good. But more than that, I'm excited about the restaurant that they have here right on the premises that can taste all that wonderful chang. We put in a little bit of zucchini, courgette, summer squash, whatever you like to call it. And it goes right in there after the potato. Right now, what we're doing is we're taking a little bit of the stock and mixing it in with the tenjang. Just a little hit of red chili pepper. It's good. It's clean and complex. It's it, it's almost humbling when you when you taste it because you can really sense in the flavor how long it's been aged, and it's almost like a fine wine in that regard. So today we're in Yanido, and a secret about this area is that there are a ton of little side streets like this where you can really focus on yourself and focus on calm and healing. So we're here today at Cafe 129-11, and starting your day off here with a cup of coffee that's just been roasted in house fresh is starting right. The Sadamun Museum of Natural History, it shows the huge, awe-inspiring scope that is, you know, life on this planet. So, believe it or not, we actually haven't left Seoul at all. This right here is a space for writers and other creative types to gather and create together and just get away. So today we're at Min's Kitchen, where they take traditional flavors and just put a little bit of a twist on them. It's modern without being intimidating because they want to make sure that the food stays comfortable and fun.
know, I've long said that. The flavor of the summer is grilling. There's nothing that can compare to that nice smoky, meaty flavor on a hot day. Mm. Food always tastes better when you can eat it with your hands. It's pretty tasty. So we're here today at the Children's Grand Park. And true to its name, it's great for children, and it certainly is grand. It's a great place to take out the family, just connect with nature for a day. And the best part is, it's all free. So this part of the park is known as the traditional fairy tale village. And you know what? All the characters are here. So we're at the Tuksam Han River Park, and this structure specifically is known as the Chabole or the inchworm. It features a number of exhibitions year-round, but more importantly, the structure itself is a work of art. It's also really close to the subway station, so it's super easy to get to. So this is Kwangjinggu, and with the monsoon season coming up, you're gonna to wanna to stay out of the rain. So, these streets are packed with places, so you can eat, have a ton of fun, all while staying dry. So the amazing thing about Choringi Tokoku is that it's been around for over 10 years. It's a neighborhood institution, it's a landmark practically. So if you're in the area, you gotta stop and try something. Which is exactly what I'm gonna do. That's awesome. Mm. Mm. So today we're dining at Miao, which is a Japanese restaurant that takes classic recipes and gives them a nice modern twist. Their specialty is bento, which is the Japanese lunchbox, which I believe makes any dining experience better. I'm ready and I'm hungry. It's a plate full of eel and chashu, or braised pork, in this case pork belly or sushi. And what's great is just that it's like a surf and turf, but both of them are just so rich and decadent that I really want to eat the whole thing. So today we're at Peguin Lake, and it's nestled between Chunga Mountain and the neighboring ranges. I have to say, I'm thrilled to be here today. They've got cafes, they've got restaurants, but the best part is it's just outside of Seoul, not too far at all, so it makes it perfect for a weekend getaway, or just even in an afternoon. I have to say, I'm really excited to be here, and I can't wait to see more. Safety first. And I have to say, getting on a boat is probably one of the best feelings in the world. It's just all right. being in the middle of the lake and not in the middle of the city, not in the middle of a crowded street or a road, can't beat that.
So we're at the Railway Museum right now, and how cool is this? All of these trains from a long time ago, and it kind of makes me feel like I'm in a movie. Wow, it feels like a different time. About to embark on a train, maybe find a long lost love. I have to say, I love this little bit of history. So with over a thousand years of history, Chunga Temple is one of the most important Buddhist temples here in Korea, both from a spiritual and a cultural perspective. So that sound you hear right now, they're holding prayer right now, so. But what brings visitors here, spiritual and non-spiritual alike, in droves is the beautiful Chunga Mountain. So this afternoon, we're at Tiranche, and it's a restaurant, but more than that, I feel like I've stepped into a Monet painting. The grounds are vast and manicured, and it almost feels like I'm in a fairy tale. The food is all Korean, but I gotta say, all this beauty is making me hungry. All right, this all looks so wonderful. And you know what? I can't really think of a better place to have this food either. Let's give it a taste. You know, there's a subtle sweetness to this dish, which I really like because you don't often find sweet preparations of abalone. And that char that goes along with it, perfect. It's stuck in an orange balsamic sauce, but once wrapped up in that pickled leaf, it really does become a Korean dish. It's really quite fascinating. Today, I'm in Incheon, and the first image that comes to your mind when you hear Incheon, it's that it's got an airport. Sure, it's got that, but it's got so much more as well because it's got such a rich history, but at the same time, it's been rapidly developed. So there's really no other city quite like it. So come join me as we explore the city. Anytime I travel, I always try to find the nearest Chinatown. And that's because anytime Chinese culture comes into a certain city, it always takes on a life of its own. And Incheon's Chinatown is no different. It's a fantastic place to spend the day, with your friends, family, or even by yourself. I'm at the Korean Chinese Cultural Center right now, and it's full of these really cool Chinese cultural artifacts, both uh, contemporary and historical. But what's interesting about this place is that you can get this sort of cross-section of Chinese culture here in Incheon. It's really quite fun. You know, Incheon is probably one of the most rapidly developed areas of this country. There are places here that almost seem like they're from the future. But uh, here at the Sudo Sun Museum of Housing and Living, you really get to see what a traditional town looked like in this area. And like I say, I get a real kick out of it. I love seeing what this area used to look like.
Today we're at Tocheon, and I have to say, I'm dying with the smell right now because it smells so delicious and I'm starving. It's a Korean restaurant, they do courses, and they specialize in duck. The first two floors of the restaurant are the dining rooms, and the third floor, they actually have a cafe. But uh, enough about that, I'm gonna start tasting. Oh, this is really good. I mean, surprisingly good. I mean, I expected it to be good. It smelled delicious, but I didn't expect the flavor to be so deep and clean at the same time. It's really wonderful. Fantastic. I'm at the Jeunesse Chocolate Museum right now. And this place is fantastic. I love learning about anything, and especially as something as delicious as chocolate, that's wonderful. They've got these incredible chocolate sculptures here, and you can make your own chocolates as well. So I'm on the Ferris wheel right now on Woimi Island. There's a, there's a museum park here, it's actually very well known, and it's cold out. I'm not even gonna lie, it's cold, but that view makes it worth it. Today, I'm in Funda. It's a relatively young city, and I think where I'm standing right now illustrates that point pretty clearly. And with the young city comes young families, and with young families come children and the need for some educational fun. So, let's explore. I'm spending this gorgeous spring day here at Yultong Park. You see that beautiful lake behind me, and you know what? They've also got a couple of thrilling surprises as well. Bungee jumping at the heart of it is pure physics. And if my high school science classes were anything like this, my life might have turned out a little bit differently. So I'm about to answer the age-old question. If your friends jumped off a bridge, would you? Five, four, three, two, one, one. Never can hear me. I feel kind of bad. You know, when I first came to the book theme park, I was a little disappointed, I'm not gonna lie, that there wasn't a Charles Dickens roller coaster or a Samgukji themed Ferris wheel. But the more I spend time here, the more I'm kind of falling in love with it. It's a beautiful place and it's dedicated to the love of books. There are art installations outside, there's a little library downstairs, there's even an amphitheater for live music in the summertime. I could spend some time here. So right here is the Cafe Street in Chongjadong, and it's a really cute neighborhood. It's a sort of Sunday morning brunch sort of place, you know, where you come with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or, you know, with your friends to have a chat. And I've stopped in one of the cafes, Cafe Doria. Just gonna have a cup of coffee and take in the neighborhood. Okay, so that took an embarrassingly long time to do, but what I just created was the mascot for the Canny Village, this fellow right here, Canny. Now, what I don't know much about puzzles, I do know something about cans, and they're actually really important. They're one of the most important methods of food preservation, and this is a museum that's dedicated to the recycling of those. So this week's restaurant is Surayachan, and they specialize in traditional Korean course meal, or hanjangchi. But get this, all this food right here, under 10,000 won per person. And they're famous for their kanjanggejang, which is crab that's been marinated in soy sauce. And in Korean, it's known as a paptoru, which is a rice thief, because as you eat it, you just keep on wanting to eat more and more rice, you eat more of the kejang, you eat more rice. It's a vicious cycle, it's a delicious cycle, and I'm gonna try some. Today I'm in Yangjushi, and though I'm just outside of Seoul, it feels like not only am I in a different place, but in a different era. 
This city, it's got a ton to do, especially when it comes to the cultural and historical things. So come with me as we explore the city and we take a blast from the past. Right now, I'm at the Felix Lighting Museum. And here, not only do they go through the history of lighting and you know, the use of light, but also some more modern and contemporary concepts as well. Ceramics have always been an incredibly important part of Korean culture. And whenever you get a chance, you know, get out there and get your hands in some clay, get them dirty. It's incredibly therapeutic. And who knows, you might be able to come up with something that looks quite nice. I'm at the Cheongan Folk Museum right now. And this place is really quirky in that they take things from about 100 years ago and pieces from about 30 years ago and they put them all under one roof. It has this sort of unique feel to it. It's its own thing and it kind of feels timeless but historical at the same time. It's really cool. So I've just sat down here at Kilazon and this spread looks fantastic. They specialize in hanjongshik, which is the traditional Korean meal that comes out in courses, but I lucked out and got everything all at once. I'm super excited. Let's taste. 